Well, it turns out Democratic Senator Sherrod Brown will be facing off against Bernie, but not that Bernie, Republican Bernie, specifically Bernie Moreno, the guy behind me. Now, based on polls, it seems like Brown has a pretty comfortable lead right now, but that's not to say that Moreno can't win because he's been endorsed by Trump and he's trying to LARP as a populist in response to Brown's working class appeal. And LARPing as a populist has been effective in Ohio, given how they just elected J.D. Vance over Tim Ryan. Now, this is not necessarily the worst Republican ever, right? Not the scariest, not the most extreme, but he might be the phoniest, perhaps even more so than J.D. Vance, which is a pretty impressive feat, because we don't actually know who Bernie Moreno is. It seems like a character he constructed for purposes of this campaign. So let me tell you what I mean by that. So he was endorsed by Trump, and he, of course, brings up that endorsement whenever he can. It's on his campaign signage. He also calls himself a Trump-endorsed America First outsider. And if you go to his campaign website, you're not going to find any policies, but you will find a picture of him with Trump first, even before you get to the donation part. But what's funny is that he wasn't always the biggest Trump guy. In fact, he was attacking Trump not that long ago. As CNN reports, Bernie Moreno, a Republican businessman running for the U.S. Senate in Ohio, once said there was no scenario in which he would support Donald Trump. He called Trump a fake Republican who stokes hatred and fear and suggested that the former president's popularity is the result of ignorance in our society. Moreno now attacks the wine-sipping country club Republicans who are offended by President Trump's words. He characterizes individuals in prison for capital riot related offenses as political prisoners claims the 2020 election was stolen and alleges collaboration between big tech the swamp the corporate media and democrats to rig the election. Despite this, he previously congratulated President Joe Biden on his 2020 presidential win, and after the attack on the Capitol in January of 2021, Moreno posted, Trump deserves lots and lots of blame for this, adding, he didn't calm tensions. No one, and certainly not me, has excuses that behavior, or can excuse that behavior, I think he's trying to say. So he's been all over the place, and I feel like just pointing out that he was anti-Trump and then pro-Trump really doesn't do it justice. So let me break it down for you. In November of 2020, he was encouraging people to accept the results of the election, and he also denounced Trump for claiming that the election was fraudulent without proof, saying that it'd potentially do irreparable harm to the United States. And on January 6th, he said that the insurrection insurrectionists made an embarrassment of the country. And then, just over one year later, in December of 2021, he had completely changed his tune and released this ad. President Trump says the election was stolen, and he's right. Yeah. So needless to say, that is quite the turnaround, and it might even be a faster 180 than Tulsi Gabbard, which says something. Now, all of his tweets criticizing Trump have, of course, since been deleted. And a clip from the ad that we just saw was from his first Senate campaign in 2021, where he was actually competing in a GOP primary against J.D. Vance, who went on to win. But just two years later, he came back and he actually won. And it just feels like Ohio's Republican Party really has an affinity for phonies. Like, what are you all doing there? But the 2020 election is not the only thing where he's had a change of heart. As LGBTQ Nation reports, prior to his first Senate run in 2021, Moreno, who has said his eldest son is gay, was a vocal supporter of LGBTQ plus rights. But during his current campaign, he has accused advocates of LGBTQ plus rights of pushing a radical agenda of indoctrination and described his primary opponents as supporting a radical trans agenda. He has been endorsed by the anti-LGBTQ plus group Ohio Values Voters. So this is obviously one of those politicians that just goes wherever way the wind blows, right? He wasn't vehemently anti-LGBTQ plus in 2021 because that was before Don't Say Gay and the GOP's hysteria over groomers and indoctrination. But now that the rest of the party has adopted those talking points, well, of course, he's got to parrot them too at everything he hears, even though he knows that that rhetoric is harmful because he has a gay son, or at least if he's not lying about that too. But regardless of how fake he is as a person or a politician, rather, he was smart 
to not say anything about LGBTQ plus rights in 2021, given the dark secret about him that was just discovered by AP. They report, after vaulting into the top tier of contenders with a coveted endorsement from Donald Trump, Moreno, who has shifted from a public supporter of LGBTQ rights to a hardline opponent, is confronting questions about the existence of a 2008 profile seeking men for one-on-one -on -one sex on a casual sexual encounters website called Adult Friend Finder. Quote, Hi, looking for young guys to have fun with while traveling, reads a caption on a photoless profile under the username Nardo19672. <laughs> According to an Associated Press review of records made public through a massive and well-publicized data breach of the website, records also show the profile was last accessed about six hours after it was created. The AP review confirmed that someone with access to Moreno's email account created the profile, though the AP could not definitively confirm whether it was created by Moreno himself. Damn. I bet that he wishes he didn't go full anti-LGBTQ plus bigot because if he didn't, then I don't think anyone would have really suspected anything, right? Republicans have yet to learn that them being openly antagonistic towards queer people makes them very suspicious, right? Everybody knows that Lindsey Graham is a six on the Kinsey scale, for example, but since he's not openly hateful towards queer people, he's not drawing any unwanted attention right? He's not getting people to look into his search history or something or try to figure out any details about what may or may not be lacking in the closet. We just know he's gay, but since he's not talking about it, nobody really perceives him as being a hypocrite. But if a Republican starts being really anti-gay, well, then odds are that individual has something to hide and there's a possibility, a strong possibility that that person could be a hypocrite. They never learn, though. But apparently there is a perfectly valid reason as to why he was allegedly seeking out sex with another man in 2008. It was a prank, bro. I'm not joking. That is literally the excuse that they're running with. AP continues, on Thursday evening, two days after the AP first asked Moreno's campaign about the account, the candidate's lawyer said a former intern created the account as a prank. The lawyer provided a statement from the intern, Dan Reese, who said he created the account as part of a juvenile prank. Quote, I am thoroughly embarrassed by an aborted prank I pulled on my friend and former boss, Bernie Moreno, nearly two decades ago, Reese said. The AP couldn't independently confirm Reese's statement and he didn't immediately respond to messages left for him on multiple phone numbers listed to him. He donated $6,599 to Moreno's campaign last year, according to campaign finance records. Moreno's lawyer, Charles Harder, that's a really unfortunate name given the circumstances, insisted Moreno had nothing to do with the AFF account. I'm sure. But the question is, what exactly is the prank? Hey, bro, I just created a profile with your email to find a guy to have sex with. Gotcha. It's just a prank, bro. I mean, how exactly is that a prank? Am I missing something here? This excuse <laughs> makes no sense. And it's so fucking stupid. He should have just said, if they were going to lie, he should have just said, this was a staffer that stole my email because he didn't want to come out. And so, like, he used my email to find men to hook up with. I, I don't know. I just feel like saying it's a prank is, like, the worst excuse you could possibly come up with. What I'm assuming happened uh, is that Moreno actually did create the profile while horny because he was looking for sex with men. But he felt guilty about the prospect of cheating on his wife with a man. So he chose to just jerk off instead and ended up abandoning the profile altogether in his post not clarity that's at least the best outcome for his wife because he is married and i would feel bad if he did cheat on her but it's also possible that he did find someone to hook up with within six hours and then just never returned to adult friend finder after mission accomplished i'm not sure but here's the thing he is now the gop nominee and this could hurt him since they've chosen to make queer people their enemy in fact a super PAC aligned with his primary opponent matt dolan actually turned this story into an ad. A new AP report suggests that Bernie Marino, a married man, trolled the internet seeking men for one-on-one -on -one sex, looking for young guys to have fun with while traveling. Creepy, huh? So, I mean, that's been his life as of late. 
Even though he is the winner, he has to worry about this, and he's been in full-on damage control mode as a result since this scandal broke. But he decided to send out the big guns in order to set the record gay, I mean straight. So he sent out his wife slash beard Bridget Moreno to release the following statement, quote, My husband and I have known Matt Dolan and his family for years. For him to stoop this low simply because he's losing this race is disgusting, disgraceful, and he should be embarrassed. If he's willing to slander my husband simply to win a political election, election, he doesn't belong anywhere near elected office. I know family values might not mean much to Matt Dolan, but they mean a lot to his family. His desperate attempts will backfire, and I have full confidence that Ohioans will see through his dirty tricks and elect an actual conservative to the U.S. Senate. Now that this story has been proven to be 100% false, sure, Bridget, if Matt even has an ounce of integrity left in him, he will publicly disavow this slime coming from his family-funded super PAC. So Bridget Moreno coming out guns blazing in defense of her man saying, fuck you for saying that her husband is gay. We all know it was just a prank that was 100% confirmed. This reminds me of that scene from The Righteous Gemstones, if you've seen it, where Jesse Gemstone, the son of a prosperity preacher, uh, is in the car with his wife, and just as she's telling him how thankful she is that he's always so honest with her, he begins to pursue another vehicle because the person driving, he notices, is the same person who has a video of him doing drugs and fucking sex workers, and he's blackmailing him. So they get into this high-speed chase, and the car he's pursuing ends up flipping over, and then he pulls over, right, gets out of the car, grabs his gun, and then his wife says, baby, what on earth is going on? And he looks at her and says, nothing, baby, it's just some guys I do car pranks with. That right there is Bridget Moreno, because he's basically saying, listen, this gay stuff, it's not true. These guys I'm sucking off, it's just some guys I do sucking off pranks with. <laughs> I'm like, hey, fellas, any of you want your dick sucked? Oh, just kidding. Unless. <laughs> it's just, I can't, I cannot believe they're running with the prank excuse. I, like, I can't, like, Bernie, come on. This is, it's the worst excuse ever. It's so unbelievable. Now, the good news for Bridget is that I don't actually think that Bernie is gay. That doesn't mean he's straight. I think he's probably bisexual. That's the vibes that I get from him. Having said that, though, has he ever acted on it? I don't know. Because taking the step to create an adult friend finder profile while married, you know, it is a little bit suspicious. So if I were her, I would be worried. But it is a sad story because this man has a family. He has a wife, and if he really did cheat on her, you know, it's just, it's sad, right? But at the same time, I can't not laugh at the story, given the excuse that he used, because I'm sorry, that just makes this shit inherently hilarious. I, I can't, like, you said it's a prank. What the fuck? How do you do, how do you say that with a straight face, right? And I love that Bridget is, like, she, I don't even know what she looks like, but I just imagine her being this really sweet, innocent woman who believes everything her husband says, and she also thinks he's a true conservative as well, because that's what she said, when just a couple of years ago, he was denouncing election truthers, but now he's one of them. So, I mean, what do you say? You know, there's naivete, and then there's just straight-up stupidity, right? So, this is who Republican Party primary voters chose to go with, an anti-gay closet case who's saying whatever he thinks he needs to say in order to obtain power. He might not necessarily be the most extreme or scary Republican running in this election cycle, but people that thirsty for power are honestly the last people that should have it. So, I hope that people in Ohio don't fall for his bullshit in the same way that they fell for J.D. Vance's bullshit. You have a better option. Go with that option. Play stupid games, win stupid prizes. Play stupid games, win stupid prizes. Play stupid games, win stupid prizes. Play stupid games, F around and find out. Play stupid games, win stupid prizes. Play stupid games, win stupid prizes. Play stupid games, win stupid prizes. Play stupid games, gay pride. Trans rights are human rights. It is necessary to push trans on the kids. Gay, 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 gay,